Hi. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Hi, my name's Morgan. Uh, I write songs, I don't write songs. I write poems about my feelings. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna get into it. I had like a little speech plan, but I forgot it all because I had beer. So uh, <laughs> this one's uh, kind of untitled, shit. There we go. That's, yeah, you're right. Uh, okay. Sometimes I have a longing deep in my heart for a late 2000s Friday afternoon. Sleepover permission granted, anticipation crazed bus ride home, making a bucket list for the next 24 hours, a walk to Suzy Q's for a scary movie rental and some two liters of soda, four-wheeler rides through the pastures or stone skipping in the creek or guitar hero until our fingers hurt and our vision is stuck drifting upward even when we turn away from the TV. A pizza ordered from the gas station or several orders of fries and cheese curds from Ma and Pa's Cafe. Sunsets, lights out, scary movie with the big sliding door next to the TV, looking out over the vast shadowy pasture and tree line beyond. Paranoia and tricks of vision convincing us that there are creatures lurking in those shadows. We hold hands, content in the safety of our teenage camaraderie, certain that we will always be this close, bearing our souls as proof of our allegiance, crushes on big brothers, crushes on each other, feeling hopelessly romantic and endlessly optimistic about the future that we are so sure is going to be better than our parents, better than being stuck in the same small town where everyone knows your name, knows your parents, your grandparents, can remember the time your uncle wrecked his Jeep into the bar, can recall seeing your parents scream at each other on the front porch, where adult women hold grudges against you for your mother's high school transgressions, and adult men leer at you as your features mature over the years. But it will no longer matter because soon you will be out there living your dreams. Forget plans, forget grades, forget ACT prep and college applications. In 10 years, the world will be yours. It's as simple as that. Oh, to walk with such starry eyes again, to have a fundamental lack of understanding of the world and how it works, to believe that all I need is good work ethic, and to want it hard enough. That's my first poem, sorry y'all. I got some long ones. Also, I did not say most of that into the mic. So this next, uh, this next poem is about my grandpa. I haven't named it either. <laughs> More untitled shit. <clears throat> I finished this one this morning, so it's new untitled shit. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait for it to get quiet. Hi, Kara. You look great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Poetry time. <laughs> he collected hobbies the way he collected butterflies, or books, or watches and clocks, musical instruments, gazebo replicas, family pictures, yardsticks, big rocks, little rocks, Plymouth Old Settlers t-shirts, literal hats, metaphorical hats. Some of the hats he wore were those of husband, carpenter, historian, squirrel tamer, gardener, avid reader, father, soldier, amateur ham radio operator, jokester, Mr. Plymouth, and grandpa. He was a slight man with a persistent ornery grin. He handmade toys for his grandchildren and built a deck on every house he moved to. He liked to take me morel mushroom hunting with him because I was closer to the ground than him. He insisted on installing wall-sized mural of an autumnal watermill scene in his dining room, ignoring the protests of his wife and children. I always admired that obnoxious mural. My grandfather faded as many grandfathers do. Sickness took his energy and his ability to do, well, everything. So he withdrew into himself. When he passed, we inhaled sharp sorrow and exhaled relief. And yet the impression he left on me was far greater than I was able to realize at the time. Even today, his scope of influence is hard for me to grasp, but I glimpse it in tiny, glittering moments almost daily. 
my excitement when a new bird appears in my yard, my insistence that most breaks can be fixed with a careful application of super glue, my need to poke every mushroom with a stick, my impulse to begin a conversation with every squirrel, chipmunk, and rabbit that wanders into my yard. I wonder what he would think of me now. Would he enjoy helping me assemble the miniature dioramas that I am fascinated with? Make additional intricate furniture to add to the scenes? Would he deliver a new color of iris that he has hybridized and helped me plant them in the front flower beds? Would he enjoy hearing me play an old Elvis tune on the ukulele that his brother made? Would he pick up his banjo and play along? The biggest gift my grandfather gave me was the understanding that some people are unable to express their love in words, but if you pay close attention, you will see that love manifest in actions, in the tender look behind a camera lens, in the ability to catch your softest moments, in the determination to always fix what is broken, the belief that nothing is beyond salvation in spending time together, even if it is spent in silence, in giving, in giving, in giving. Thank you. <laughs>